right, welcome everyone. Today is Monday, August 9th, 2021. This is the regular meeting of the City of Asbury Planning Board. Um, and this is a prerequisite. Please call us to order. Yes, uh, this meeting is being held in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided to the Coaster and Asbury Park Press by publication of the annual meeting notice and posted on the Municipal Bulletin Board and Municipal website. All notices are on file with the Board Secretary. Official action may be taken at the following matters before this Board. Fire exits are located on east and west sides of Council Chambers as well as the back of the building. I will ask everyone with a cell phone or other device to kindly silence your device for the duration of this meeting. This meeting is also being recorded by APTV. And one last item, if anybody does need any uh, uh, masks, uh, there are some on the table to my right. Uh, if anybody needs anything, or if anybody comes in that doesn't have one, um, please direct them that to, to there, if I don't <laughs> ahead of time. Um, please join me for Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mayor, 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 here. Here. Okay, we have the first item up on the agenda are the uh, minutes of the July 26th regular meeting. If anyone has any concerns, please let me know. And if not, um, can I get a motion to approve those minutes? Move to approve. Second. I'm sorry, was the second read? Yes. Thank you. I have a motion by Ron Payton and a second by Rick Lambert. And everyone except for Mayor Joan Moore, Alexis Taylor, and Rick. Oh, I'm sorry, Rick. You weren't here for that. That's right. Can I get, a, oh, that's can right. I get another second? second sorry. I'll second it. Thank you. I have a motion by Ron Payton and a second by Parker Kirchhoff. Uh, all in favor other than Mayor Joan Moore, Alexis Taylor, and Rick Lambert? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Any opposed? Thank you, minutes approved. Okay, then the uh, the only application that we have today is the AP Block 4001 Venture Urban Renewal LLC. It was carried from June 3rd, um, requiring a new notice? No, actually, I don't believe notice was required, but uh, applicant did in fact notice, uh, and the notices are in proper form. Huh? That's, so okay. We have jurisdiction and we will swear in Sean again, and we'll also swear in Doug yes. And stand yes. As well. Please. Okay. Uh, let's start with uh, Sean. Solomon Sir, testimony about giving this matter is the truth, all truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Okay. State your name again for the record. Okay. Sean S E A N Delaney D E L A N Y, uh, principal with Bowman Consulting, licensed professional engineer. Okay. And uh, let's swear in stand it up, gentlemen. Please raise your right hands. <laughs> Solomon Sir, testimony about the giving this matter is the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. Okay. Please uh, state your names for the record, starting with Stan and your affiliation with the board. Sure. Stan Slohepka, Quintin M Associates, with the planning consultant for the board. Thank you. Doug Cullen from Insight Engineering, board engineer. Thank you. Jennifer? Board Thank board. you. It's good to see everyone in person again. Uh, for the record, my name is Jennifer Phillips Smith. I am an attorney with Gibbons PC, and I'm here tonight on behalf of the applicant. I know with the mask on, hopefully this is picking me up, but if at any time you can't hear me, please you know, raise your hand and let me know. Uh, it's good to be back in front of you. We were last here on June 3rd, only it was virtual. And at that time you heard from our architect and our landscape architect and also Mr. Delaney. As you may recall, this application concerns the proposed multifamily development and townhome development on block 4001. At the conclusion of that hearing, there were a number of questions that had been raised by the board where you asked the applicant to go back and sharpen our pencils a bit, take a look to see if we could make some changes to the plans. We resubmitted plans on uh, June 25th, thereabouts, as well as a supplemental package on July 20th. 
And where we'd like to start this evening is by recalling Mr. Delaney to run through those uh, list of questions that the board had specifically and to identify how we address them. Before I do that, I do just want to mark one exhibit. Uh, as Mr. Serpico indicated, we did provide additional public notice we provided the affidavit to the board secretary and we just for the record like to mark that affidavit as exhibit A37, just for the record. All right, so can we, just because it's been a little bit and we have gone through some of your witnesses, sure. we've, um, to be clear, just so that we're in agreement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so at this point, your architect and your landscape architect have already testified. Correct. We've completed that whole process along with public questions correct we are now on to mr delaney with what he testified to on june 3rd plus the modifications that we've asked for since then sure i'm not going to ask him to repeat his testimony from the prior hearing no right right but i will ask him to go through the modifications and then he will be open for board comment and question and public question that's fine all right so mr delaney we're going to kind of just go one by one so we'll start with, there was a, que a request for stoops. Oh, let me get this back up on the screen. We're gonna start by marking the exhibit here as A38. And as Mr. Delaney goes through, we'll mark each one. So Mr. Delaney, was the applicant able to accommodate stoops on the front of the townhomes that face 3rd and 4th Avenue? Uh, yes, we were. The, uh, the exhibit A38 is a townhouse entrance exhibit dated 7-2-2021, uh, prepared by my office. It shows a five by five sitting area located uh, on the opposite side of the, of the unit from the main entrance on each of the, uh, the townhouses fronting 4th Avenue and Townhouse Building 1 and uh, on 3rd Avenue, Townhouse Building 4. I'll turn to the next exhibit, which we'll mark as A38. Can you describe uh, what this exhibit is? These are revised uh, elevations of the townhomes um, prepared by Lassar Design, showing the inclusion of the stoops um, in the area. I don't know if you can point to them, Jennifer, roughly just uh, off-centered from the, where the person is standing. Um, it's off-centered from the door, is the location of the 5x5 five five sitting area. We have another exhibit that I'll mention over here. And just to correct the record, this was A39, and now I'm turning to A40 which is, I believe, a close-up of two of the units showing the stoops. Is that correct? Correct. That's also prepared by Lassar Design. It's uh, sheet number B.500. <clears throat> As you can see, the person is standing on the stoop area on the right-hand side of the end unit of the, of the townhomes there. So they'd come out the front door, come down a couple steps to the seating area, and then there's some additional steps to get down towards the sidewalk. Turning to the next question, there was a question about the internal sidewalks that ran through the townhome portion of the site to connect 3rd and 4th Avenue. Will those be public or private? Those will be pro uh, private sidewalks. And will the applicant agree to post private property signs if recommended by the board? Yes. And, and may, can, I, can I just mention as part of that, most from what, what a lot of these, uh, the, the, these complexes have is no trespassing. That's so fine. just like Five has, just just like uh, Wesley Grove has, mm -hmm. they're very specific. No trespassing signs. If that's, I mean, I, if that's, I'm gonna I'm gonna request that. So I'll just get it off my chest right now. That that's <laughs> acceptable to applicant. Okay. So turning here to the next exhibit, which is Exhibit A forty one. Uh, there was a request to add additional trash cans. Uh, Mr. Delaney, can you discuss where the trash cans are now proposed? Yeah, so A41 is uh, sheet C4, the layout and dimensioning plan that was submitted uh, back in June as part of the, the recent revised site plans that, that were sent in. Um, so, on, uh, so additional trash cans were added as requested on 3rd Avenue. You had the, exist the one trash can we proposed at Kingsley and 3rd along 3rd Avenue. Then we added one uh, about the mid block right by the uh, driveway to the townhomes. And then the third one added up near the intersection with Berg Street. Uh, in addition, we've also added two additional trash cans in the center median, one on the extreme west and one on the extreme east sides. Similarly, on 4th Avenue, we've done the same thing. We had the one trash can previously proposed at the northeast corner. We've added a trash can by the, uh, in front of the multifamily by the access to the townhomes. 
and then another trash can up by the intersection with Berg Street, once again on 4th Avenue, and two within the center median, one on the west side and one on the east side. So we have added an additional eight trash cans um, beyond the, the, what, we, what we showed previously. Now, Mr. Delaney, as we mentioned previously, it is actually the master redeveloper that is doing the streetscape improvements, is that correct? Correct. And applicant will agree that the master developer will show these trash cans subject to the city engineer's approval, correct? Correct. So we're turning now to an exhibit we'll mark as A42. Uh, this is the submitted revised landscaping plan. Mr. Delaney, I'd like to start. There was a recommendation that taller plantings be incorporated uh, at the corner of the multifamily building along the entrance uh, driveway to the townhomes. Has that been done? <laughs> yes, it has. And this uh, A42 is the streetscape and material, streetscape materials and planting plan sheet L1 that was also revised and resubmitted in June. Um, Sorry, I believe it looks, like it looks like it was done in July. I apologize. Had a revision date in July um, as part of the supplemental submission. Yes, um, we've revised the landscaping at those two locations, the northwest and southwest corners of the multifamily building. We're now proposing uh, a viburnum uh, planting with a growth height of 42 to 48 inches, <laughs> along with an eastern red cedar with a growth height of five to six feet. So they were larger than what was previously proposed um, to add some screening uh, against the uh, multifamily building at those two locations. And for street trees, has the applicant now proposed a different type of street tree? Yes, uh, the street trees along third and fourth avenues have, changed, have been revised and now proposed to be Japanese flowering cherry trees, uh, subject to the approval of the city engineer. I'm going to go back one exhibit to A41, which was the, the prior exhibit. Uh, there was discussion in the planning letter concerning the jurisdiction of the board over the infrastructure improvements in the right of way, including street trees and street lights. Uh, can you discuss the process under the redevelopment plan and redevelopment agreement for the approval of infrastructure within the waterfront? So on uh, page 52 of the redevelopment plan, it states, that the governing body slash redevelopment agency shall provide final approval of the sidewalk, crosswalk, and public spaces, landscape, and streetscape design. The governing body has adopted the infrastructure component report and through the redevelopment agreement has delegated responsibility for final approval of the infrastructure to the city engineer. So all of the details concerning the locations of the lights, the street lights, the locations of the street trees, and the planting uh, pit details, those will all be submitted for city engineer review. Is that correct? Yes. And as such, the applicant is not seeking uh, relief or approval for those specific items in this application. Is that correct? Correct. All right. There was one other question about landscaping. And so I'll go back to what was marked just previously as A42. And that was uh, L1. Can you describe how the transformers that are on the interior of the site are proposed to be uh, screened? So the transformers are located uh, just to the north and south of the two um, of the, the two interior uh, townhouse buildings, as being pointed to by Ms. Smith. Um, they are set in a location that meets the spacing and clearance requirements of JCPNL. They require a three feet clearance on three sides, with a ten foot clearance on the fourth side. Um, as required, we have provided screening of those transformers on the north and south sides to screen it from the public right of way. Um, there's some additional screening located between the transformers um, in the middle island uh, that separates the screen wall from the sidewalk. Um, additional landscaping along the sidewalk uh, due to the, the clearance requirements. Um, right now, we, there's not enough room to put any screening at that point, so we've, we've placed the transformers where we could to provide the screening from the public right of way which uh, on this application, I believe, on, on, has been a consistent uh, um, comment to the board about screening it from the public, and that's what we have done. Going to move to what we're going to mark is exhibit A43, and we'll now talk about rooftops. Uh, there was a question from the board about the 
top floor rooftop. This is the rooftop that's above the sixth floor in the corner of the building and what that rooftop area might be used for. Uh, before I get to that question, first, it's been labeled as optional. Can you describe what optional means in this context? It is, it is the intent of the, the applicant uh, to develop, to build it out as a usable space for residents. However, um, they reserve the right to not do that and then the space would be just left, left as an inaccessible roof area. So it will either be improved for residents or it will be just a, a remaining uh, blank roof. So if it is improved for residents, is Exhibit A43 a representation of how that area would be developed? Yeah, yes. Uh, so we've revised the, the previous uh, design for that space. And A43 is an exhibit entitled Rooftop Amenity Space Optional. Um, the, the main focus here was the removal of that bar countertop area um, that raised some questions previously. Uh, and we replaced the uh, space with three uh, distinct seating areas on the route for passive seating uh, for residents of the uh, of the building. Um, there is an optional fire pit that also their fire feature to go uh, that could be placed there, but is really just going to be for you know, seating and congregation of residents on the rooftop. Let's talk now about the pool deck area, which is the area that was described by Mr. Moran for the, the middle oops, the middle area of the entire building, essentially the, the hole in the donut. There was a question as to what was going to be developed there. Can you state for the record what is intended to be developed in that pool area? So the exhibit A, uh, A44 is the overall site rendering that's been uh, presented several times at the previous hearings. The design of that uh, amenity area has not changed from the previous, uh, previous presentations and Mr. J Mr. Moran's testimony. So what has been proposed on his plan is what is expected to be constructed by the applicant. Right. Uh, there was a question going back to the roof about the actual roof material for the non-amenity space. Can you describe what will uh, be on the top of the roof or what the material will be? Certainly. I'm going to actually do this and come on the second part as well. There are two uh, types of materials we're going to put on the roof. The white area on exhibit A44 will be a thermoplastic polyolefin membrane, waterproof membrane essentially. Um, in white in color uh, to, to uh, be placed on the roof. That will, the white color was chosen also to uh, provide more energy efficiency and not uh, absorb heat but reflect it into, back into the sky to help in cooling effects. The green areas that were previously uh, mentioned as optional green roofs, the applicant uh, is agreeing to construct those two green roofs as depicted on the plan. Next, I'd like to move to A45. There was a question about bike storage and about increasing the number of bicycles that could be stored in the multifamily building. Uh, can you describe what exhibit A45 is? Certainly. This is a blow up of the internal uh, portion of the ground floor of the building of the architectural plans. Uh, uh, zooming in on the bike storage area, the size of the room has not changed. The applicant has looked at types of systems for storage of bikes in that area. Um, and the system they are proposing at this time, which I'll show in a second as in the next exhibit, um, is able to store a total of 72 bicycles within that space. Um, if you want to, the next exhibit, A46, is a uh, sample from uh, bikeparking.com of a double decker rack for the bike, parking, uh, for the bike storage. Um, in my, my, when I looked at it, it was similar to what you used to see in Toys R Us with the bikes, um, up on top and down below, two racks across. And like I said, they're able to store 72 bikes in that space. And are there other areas internal to the building where bikes can be stored? Yes, we had uh, previously testified there were 60 storage units contained on the, gr on the ground floor of the garage. Um, each one of those storage units is capable of, of holding up to four bicycles as well. Um, so that 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 240 plus the 72 within the bike uh, storage room is able to accommodate 312 total bicycles within the multifamily building garage. And how about the townhomes? Where will those individuals store their bikes? They will be stored within the garages of each of the units. 
turning now to what will mark is exhibit A47. There were questions about the multifamily building and how refuse would be picked up by a, a hauler. Can you describe how that will function? Certainly, A47 is, uh, is, is a plan by Lassar design entitled Multifamily Trash Removal Plan. Um, it basically, as Mr. Simon, Simon had testified to, the, the residents will deposit trash in chutes to go down to the two trash rooms on the 3rd Avenue and 4th Avenue sides of the building. They'll be collected in compactors, which will then be rolled out um, in containers to the sidewalk on 3rd and 4th Avenue on trash pickup days uh, by a member of the building uh, management or maintenance staff for collection. After collection, they'll, the, the containers will be rolled back into the building and stored on tight till the next pickup. Could you go back? Uh, Kingsley Avenue is on the right-hand side of this? Yes. Okay. And just will mark as A48, is this a sample of the type of trash compactor unit that would be within the uh, two trash rooms? Yes. We'll move on to A49. There was a question about construction phasing and overall timeline. Can you describe the construction staging plan that was presented or submitted rather to the board with your June submission? Certainly. So A49 is sheet C19 construction staging plan of the revised plans that were submitted in June. Um, it shows three phases. Phase one is in red is the multifamily building. Phase two in blue are the two townhomes on the 4th Avenue side of the property. And phase three are the two southern uh, townhouse buildings, along with the improvements along the street, the, the street um, along all three frontages. Um, the applicant, uh, in accordance with the subsequent developer agreement um, that was, has been executed, will commence construction of phase one within 180 days after receipt of all government approvals for phase one, and it must complete phase one within 24 months of commencement of construction. It must also complete all phases, phases two and three, within 36 months after receipt of the building permits for phase one. So, um, yeah. There was also a question about roadway closure. You know, it, when Asbury Ocean Club was constructed, some of the roadways were uh, closed for an extended period of time. Do you expect that type of closure for this project? And speaking with the applicant, it's not, uh, the applicant does not propose to close off any of the parking or roadways along 3rd or 4th Avenue or Kingsley Street as part of this development, the construction on site. Uh, now, of course, there will be future infrastructure improvements on 3rd and 4th where the roads themselves are, are being constructed. When that happens, there would be necessary closures, correct? Correct. But that is not um, part of the building project, correct? Right, it's not part of the building of the structure and the on-site improvements. The no parking or roadways are proposed to be um, <coughs> closed. Uh, All right, we'll move to A50. Uh, there was a question about the roll-down gates that would be used at the entrance, the vehicular entrances to the parking garage. Uh, we provided a sample of a type of roll-down gate that, that could be used. Um, can you describe this type of roll-down gate and how it would function? Certainly. So what is provided as A50 um, is a, a spec sheet for the uh, a high performance, high speed uh, roll-down gate. Um, it's similar to the system that was recently installed on the Asbury Ocean Club. Um, it was chosen for the operation that will open in about four to six seconds based on the height of the door and it closes in approximately 10 seconds after the car exits obviously controlled by some kind of uh, key fob or sensor for uh, residents. Um, and then during peak times, the applicant does have the, uh, the ability to leave the door open for, for extended periods of time to let more vehicles come through without having to go up and down um, after every vehicle, so. All right, and A51 is just a second sheet describing the specifications, correct? Correct. All right. um, there was a question about LED lights, uh, have the plans been updated to correct the fixtures to show that there will be LED lights in the fixtures? Yes, all, all lighting proposed on site and on the buildings will be LED. All right, turning to exhibits A52 and what I'll then mark as A53, which were um, known as A10A and A11A that were submitted uh, previously and were previously testified to by Mr. Simon. I'm pulling them up specifically just to ask questions about the 
signage that is proposed. Can you describe the proposed signage and its um, conformity with the redevelopment plan? Sure, so the uh, sheets A, 10A, and future one A, 11A show these uh, elevations of the buildings on all four sides. Um, the elevations uh, show a total of eight signs on the facade of the building. Um, on the Kingsley Street elevation on, sh on A, uh, 10A on exhibit A52, there is a, a signage on the two retail spaces on either on the, the either end, the right side and left side of the, the page, or in this case, the northeast uh, the, the Kingsley Street facade. Um, and also over the main entrance to the building on the fourth ave elevation as the com retail space commercial space wraps around the building there's another sign uh, above that facade portion on um, exhibit a53 a sheet a dot uh, a point 11 a um, on the third ave elevation there are three signs the uh, a sign over the retail space on the the corner and then two signs identifying the parking and loading uh, driveway garage entrances to the building. Um, it is the applicant's in, in, uh, intent to comply fully with the waterfront redevelopment plans uh, <laughs> standards for the signage and that uh, they'll have each uh, have a single band at 60% of the width of the, the frontage, not to exceed a height of three feet. And if a future tenant comes in and has different plans for signage that don't conform that tenant would have to return to this board. Is that correct? That is, they'd have to return to the board for approval, yes. Uh, just very briefly, there was a uh, question about RSIS, uh, the Residential Site Improvement Standards. Can you describe what RSIS is and how it relates to this application? So the, res the RSIS, or Residential Site Improvement Standards, are the standards in the state of New Jersey that govern residential development um, in all municipalities. They govern things such as streets, streets, parking, uh, sidewalks, um, as well as other some, some utility aspects as well. In this case, the parking requirement is what is um, being uh, addressed here at this point. Um, RSIS requires parking based upon the type of, of residential unit and the number of bedrooms uh, calculated for each of those units. Per RSIS standards, we would require 439 spaces for this development. We are providing 345, which is in accordance with the waterfront redevelopment plan and the CAFR permit that was approved um, and, and set up uh, back uh, well before this application started. Um, and the, the RSIS does allow for conditions where parking may be decreased if you have several conditions that warrant it. Um, those reflect uh, local conditions in the town, such as specific household characteristics, availability of mass transit, uh, an urban versus a sub more suburban location, as well as the available off-site parking uh, resources. And presumably, when the redevelopment plan was adopted, uh, it, the, standard, the standards were set based on what was uh, what the council adopted at that time for the parking standards for this city, correct? Correct. And the CAFR permit also specifies the parking requirement for this use, correct? It does, yes. And this application complies with both the redevelopment plan and the CAFR permit, correct? Yes, it does. Okay. All right, let's turn then to the planning letter that we received. So uh, in between the last hearing and this hearing, we did receive two revised letters, one from the board's planner for this application and one from the board's engineer. Uh, there's a handful of items that we've been asked to address, although most we just did, but if any of the others we're going to address now. The first one is a memo from TNM that is dated uh, with a revised date of July 26, 2021. I don't know if the board wants to mark this one yes, as a please. B exhibit. My guess is probably B3. It's actually before. Before, okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. So in, in Exhibit B4, um, I believe we've addressed almost everything with the exception of a few things that will be addressed by our planner, who's next. But in Item 6A3, there was a request for light shields to be added to the plans for the lights that are interior to the parking garage. 
uh, to prevent uh, unnecessary spillage outside of the garage. Can those shields be added to the plans as a condition of approval? Yes, they will. Okay. All right, and then we turn to the letter that we received from Insight Engineering, and that has a date of August 2nd, 2021. It's the second engineering review letter. We'll mark that one if you don't mind, it's B5. Okay. All right, in that letter, I'm just gonna go through a few items to highlight. Uh, page three, items four and six, we can comply with those requirements, correct? Correct. All right. Uh, page four, item 32, uh, request details for pavement repair. Uh, will there be any pavement repair on 3rd and 4th Avenue? don't anticipate any, but if there is, we will provide uh, the detail or the, the areas as well as any notations um, uh, that's being requested by the, the board engineer. And both of those streets are slated to be um, improved pursuant to the infrastructure component report by the master redeveloper, correct? Correct. Um, on page five, item 37D, there, can you describe the request there concerning uh, PVC piping for stormwater? Certainly. So um, the comment is that all piping within the right of way should be, should be RCP. Um, we have proposed RCP pipe from the, the stormwater basins that are coming out uh, and connecting to the, the inlets within the street. The roof drains that come out of the building uh, directly that don't go to the underground system are proposed to connect directly to the inlets and we are proposing uh, a PVC material for that, for pipe. The, the board engineer's recommendation is to uh, specify an SDR 35, a more rigid pipe. Uh, we have no objection to that and the plans will be revised accordingly. As the waterfront redevelopment plan supersedes all other zoning requirements, do you believe a waiver is required for that uh, type of pipe? Uh, I do not. Um, I have here that items 51 and 52 on page five that the applicant will comply, correct? Yes, we will. Uh, and item 55 on page six, the applicant will comply, correct? Yes, we will. I believe we've already addressed in testimony the items in 58 through 63, but I'm sure if we've m missed something, uh, Insight will let us know. Those are all of my questions that I have for Mr. Delaney. I know that was a bit of rapid fire, but we were hoping to address each of the comments that the board members raised last time. Uh, and again, that, that's all I have for Mr. Delaney on direct. Um, I'd like just to take a moment to thank you for taking care of a lot of these items up front and not really leaving many out <laughs> that, we had, uh, that we had requested you to reply to. Uh, I thank you for that. Uh, I may have missed some things, but I'd just like to mention something about that we've spoken about. I believe that Mr. Manzella asked for the pedestrian indication for gates, uh, the gate, the garage gates going up and down, pedestrian in oh, indication I, on the sidewalks. I didn't remember that from last Side. time, but if you could describe. Uh, well, it's like, it's like a, a warning that, that the gates are going to be coming up on the sidewalk area. I believe that we have that in many buildings here. So, so like, that's like, a, it's, I don't know if Mr. Manzala has. Is that like a light or a sound? Yeah, I, don't, I wasn't specific. I don't think in the request. I think it's either a, a signal or a, or a sound. The, the yeah, it doesn't. I don't know. Right. Pass it. It's up to you, Mike. Yeah. We, we yeah, can I, comply with that. Thank you. Um, there was also, <laughs> I'm not sure, uh, Jen and uh, Mike, you both mentioned the blank wall on third. I didn't, did I miss how that was being taken care of? So uh, the applicant has proposed at the corners where the, wall was the most to put in the higher landscaping the that ranged i think the testimony was from 42 to 48 inches for one type and five to six feet for the other so that the landscaping would grow higher up on the wall than previously proposed all right so this developer will be doing that not correct the that, ice, ice. that landscaping is within the planting within beds the plant. immediately okay. against the building all right thank you so that's taken care of um does anybody from the board have anything that they uh, like to bring up or any questions to Mr. Delaney? I had one um, clarification in the um, insight uh, letter to the board, page three of nine, um, uh, they note that the application preceded the um, city's 
uh, new stormwater control ordinance. And then, but it does mention that the um, NJDEP's revised stormwater management regulation. So is the application in conformance with those new stormwater management regulations? So um, we believe it is. Mm -hmm. um, with the, the object of those regulations really was the inclusion of green infrastructure, smaller uh, on-site systems to put more water back into the ground before getting downstream. Right. Um, as part of the stormwater design here, we have uh, three separate um, stormwater infiltration basins that are proposed to recharge the roof runoff um, for some portions of those storms and then discharge the rest off-site. Um, smaller, uh, they're under the two and a half acre drainage area limit, so they are small scale. Mm -hmm. So we believe we are in compliance and we are waiting for confirmation of that from the DEP. We submitted our uh, compliance letter to them request and we're waiting to hear back to, for their approval. Thank you. I just had a quick, quick um, you had shown a while back uh, the stoop, I think elevation. Thank you. Uh, so I have the plan in front of you. Just go back to that. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm gonna make everybody and, a little dizzy. So I know it's way back mm -hmm. from the beginning. About the blow up or the uh, um the, or the that one. Um, either of the elevations is fine. I I actually just was wondering if you would mind just walking us through the change. I see it on the plan, but I kept flipping back and forth. So it, basically, you just extended the five by five sitting area is added stoop space. So what we, what we what was done is originally just as you came out the front door, you were on a landing area mm -hmm. and you went downstairs to where the gentleman is standing right now and you came uh, on the right hand side, you came out to the sidewalk directly there. You had one essentially long row of stairs down to a, a small landing that then turned a step or two down to the sidewalk. What we did is we, we um, said, you know, let, let's pull that end, exit point to the sidewalk a little further in. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're coming down, you know, four steps, essentially two feet or so down, and we can have an enhanced five by five seating area where the landing used to be. You're trying to go down the stairs, and just move the stairs um, further towards the middle of the building, and allowed us to get a, a larger seating area in that location. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. Will there be a prohibition on bike parking on stoops? I don't know that honestly we had considered that to be honest. <laughs> Um, I'm just, you know, it could just be for more bike storage, but I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. They do have a, garage, a full garage. Yeah. Understand. <laughs> I, I know. So. I understand. <laughs> but if you have a stoop, are you going to go to the garage to lock your bike, or are you going to put it on your stoop? I'd probably put it in the garage myself. Yeah. I'm just paranoid that people, <laughs> anybody feeling where I am. So. Okay. Um, I just have a another quick question on the construction phasing. I know you can't see me, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, the last phase, where where did you say again? I, I might have missed it, I apologize. The, um, that, that staging would be done? The staging for the last phase? Yeah. They didn't, they didn't talk about staging, I just thought I talked about the three phases themselves. Okay. Um, all of the, in terms of the materials, a lot of that will be stored most likely in the garage, on the ground floor, the rest of the building is being finished. Okay. There or an location. Uh, so I, I believe one way it could be done is that the trailers can be moved inside the multifamily building while the third phase is going up. So some of the, so some of the materials that would be stored for those, for those trades or so would also be put into those locations. Um, we do have the space between the two buildings <coughs> as well, the drive aisles too, um, for, uh, for access as well on the site. Okay. Anyone else? Anyone else from the board? Um, I also recall that there was a question about uh, um, the in the townhomes charging stations by Ms. Clayton. I was wondering, did, did we determine that they were actually going to, is that an option that we're going to be providing for townhome owners? Yes. That's an option, okay. I don't know if we have to put that in as a uh, condition because it was just testified here. Okay. Whole testimony on the record is made part of the uh, conditions of approval. Okay. Okay. Um, and I had one other item. There was in in the, the our planner's letter, uh, page nine under eight D. Um, there there was a mention of the how how we're going. There's nothing that's screening the uh, transformers, 
I would assume that um, that was going to happen, but it wasn't on the plan. Um, can we get a commitment that that will happen? That's what I testified to earlier today. The transformers. Is that the transformers? Okay. Correct. All right. Good. Yes. Then so, my bad. The, so the screening is provided from the public right of way yes. on the north and south sides. I believe the, the comment relates to screening it from the sidewalk that's adjacent to it uh, to provide some screening and separation there. Um, obviously, if the, this, what we've laid out is based upon JCPNL requirements. Um, if something changes in their standards, let me submit for actual um, service to be installed. Mm -hmm. And we, if we can move those transformers a little bit to provide some landscaping by maintaining whatever clearances they weed, the outcome would, we would agree to do that. Um, but right now, we this is what we believe based on the current standards they have. This is what this is where they can fit in the screen that we can provide. Just for clarification, I pulled up um, the the colored landscape plan. Is this one of the areas that screens? Provides landscaping to screen the transformer from the public view. Correct. Okay. Right at the end of the park oh. stall. Um, and, and is this area here another area that provides screening from the public view? Correct. From Fourth Avenue, same, same idea. Yep. And then we've, additional landscaping's been provided between the two transformers. Correct. Yes. All right. And uh, one other thing that was mentioned, and this is my last one. Um, can you can you review again that I know that we had spoken about ADA parking. I think that there was something about seven spots. And two van, is that in this garage or is this in the Ocean Club garage? The, I believe the, the, the architect testified that all of the, the handicapped spaces would be provided in this garage. In this garage. So you have the seven ADA and two van. I believe so, yes. Okay. Because I, I did get the numbers. I just didn't remember where yeah, they were. I don't were. believe it's across the street. I believe it's all in, this all in there. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Just... Um, I know you addressed it. Would you clarify for me again? RSIS requires 498 parking spots, and you are going to, you have 345. Uh, RSIS requires 439. 39. So, right. and we are providing 345, which is in, uh, meets the requirements of the waterfront redevelopment plan and the CAFR permit. Um, that pr proved a reduced number for every, all the buildings, for residential units within the waterfront. And that's the case uh, throughout the waterfront. The, the standard was set by the redevelopment plan and by the NJDEP, and that's the standard that everything has been built to so far within the redevelopment area. Historically, all applications, uh, well, the standard is the, the WRA plan requirement along with the CAFRA and this 345 includes the parking spots in the Ocean Club? Correct. Okay. Um, anybody else? Uh, any city professionals? Any questions? Doug, Stan? Uh, no questions, uh, uh, but I just did want to comment on the landscaping. Uh, because of the fact that we also heard testimony that uh, that's not going to be a public space, um, I think that the uh, landscape solution that they proposed, I think, would be acceptable. Okay. Great. I had one quick procedural question, I think, for Jack. Um, so we heard in the testimony that um, the infrastructure component report, the final approval, uh, rests with the city engineer. But is that in conformance with anything that we put into our resolution? Like, let's say we have opinions about tree pits or something. Well, the, the, the infrastructure plan that the city adopted is controls, mm -hmm. and, the, and the mayor and council acting in their capacity as a redevelopment agency, they have jurisdiction over that, and they use T&M, the engineering arm of T&M, for compliance. So whatever the standards are there, that's what the applicant would have to comply with. Of course, if we make a recommendation and smile and be nice that usually the applicants will, will give us a little more than, than they might be required. But in terms of the technical mm -hmm. aspects on the engineering and drainage and the like, that would all be governed by the infrastructure plan that's been looked at by TNM as and enforced by TNM on behalf of the city, as well as Insight. I mean, Insight looks at this as well, gives us the technical uh, uh, requirements. Understood. Okay. Thank you. Assuming that, the, I hope that answered your question. Yeah. 
No, I was, does. I was just wondering what was I, the ruling document there. Yeah. I tried not to do it in lawyer-like fashion. I, <laughs> I appreciate a that. To a <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, I, I have one uh, question. Will you provide me with the 99-year lease documentation? Sure. So under the subsequent development agreement that was approved by the council and has been executed, sorry about that, we are required to enter into a lease and to provide that to the city prior to the issuance of any building permit. Okay. And we would be happy to provide Thank a copy you. to the board That's as well fine. at that yeah, time. We have it in our records as well mm -hmm. as the city's. Okay. Okay. Anybody else have any other? Yes, I've Jim. Question, <laughs> uh, Mr. Delaney, you indicated that the uh, walkway, sidewalk between uh, 3rd and 4th Avenues is going to be a private sidewalk. Yes. Uh, you're aware that the uh, waterfront redevelopment plan uh, says that that is supposed to be uh, public access and it's supposed to uh, enhance the pedestrian uh, flow through the uh, middle of the block. So we're actually going to have Mr. Hughes, our planner, address that. We're going to have Mr. Hughes, our planner, address that. He's going to come up next. Um, but there was an amendment to the redevelopment plan uh, that uh, eliminated the requirement for the Muse. But we'll have Mr. Hughes discuss that in testimony. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Any uh, board members? Uh, city officials? City uh, professionals? No. Okay. Let's open it up to uh, public questions to Mr. Delaney. And once again, this has to be about what was testified sure. by Mr. Delaney on June 3rd and today. Yep. Uh, Michael Goonin, 1101 Ocean Avenue. A uh, couple quick ones for you. Um, in your previous testimony, you talked about those 60 parking spaces in the Ocean Club. Um, those are, are those in the, the section that's currently public parking? They're, they're located on the, the first floor. Um, we'll be providing an exhibit at the last hearing. It's also in the set of plans that we submitted. It's on the, the some spaces that are on the first floor of the uh, the public area and then going down the ramp towards the uh, the parking that's, that's on the bottom area. And so will those spaces be like labeled as reserved for the tenants of this building or will they still be available to the public? So actually I can answer what the subsequent redevelopment uh, agreement requires. The subsequent development agreement requires that every month that those 60 spaces be allocated for the residents. Uh, and to the extent that the residents choose not to use it, remaining spaces can be made available to the public on a monthly basis. So will there be some sort of signage there? Yes. Oh. Yes. And a key, like a, <clears throat> yes. Okay. Um, next question. So you talked a lot about the bike room today. Um, my, my one question I have for you is, so once you leave that bike room with your bike, how do you actually get out? How do you get outside? You would have, you would exit through the garage doors. Um, with so, by the vehicles and uh, so I'll ask this how do I say this is a question are you aware that the, the door currently at the Ocean Club does not allow bikes to go in and out of the roller gate I'm, I'm not aware of that I don't, I'm not sure I don't know the operations of the Ocean Club just well, yeah I guess <laughs> yeah. what I was gonna say is testimony so I'll say it later um, but that can be tricky um, and my last question is the roof deck is proposed for the northeast corner is that correct yes and that puts it behind or west of the ocean club tower correct and was there ever any thought given to putting that roof deck in like the southeast corner where you would be able to see over the ocean club i was not i was not part of that uh, those discussions uh, was, there was with the architect along with the applicant okay I, I, so I, I don't know. I don't know the exact reasoning why that why that location or not. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? No other public questions. Okay, that concludes Mr. Delaney's testimony. Thank you. I would like to call up uh, Mr. Keenan Hughes, our planner, to continue the testimony. Good evening, Keenan. How are you? Good evening. Great. How are you? Please raise your right hand. Solomon Square, the testimony about the given this map with the truth, all truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, I do. Okay. Please state your name and your uh, profession, of course. 
Keenan Hughes, HEG, HES Professional Planner. Now, Mr. Hughes, I know you've appeared before this board on numerous occasions, but for the record, can you uh, summarize your qualifications and licensure? Excuse me. Madam Chair, Mr. Hughes has testified before us 10, 20, 30 times. <laughs> I'm are fine with still, that. Are you still licensed? Yes, I am. Okay. In New Jersey. Okay. New Jersey, yeah. Okay. Good standard. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. That I am offering Mr. Hughes this evening as an expert in the field of professional planning. Sure. So, Mr. Hughes, there were a number of items uh, that were brought up in planning reports, uh, if, and I'd like you to just kind of run through and address each one. I'll let you choose where to start. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, several sort of planning issues that came up um, in the context of the review reports include uh, just confirming that the height of this proposed development is compliant with the plan. And I can affirm that the 2019 amendment to the waterfront redevelopment plan basically made this project conforming. And by that, I mean it allows up to six stories in certain areas of the block, which then transitions to four stories, which is basically within the footprint of the, the townhome buildings on the project. So um, actually that map is attached as an exhibit to Mr. Slaheka's uh, planning review letter. Um, and related to that, and this uh, goes to a question that Mr. Henry asked, is uh, the so-called Web Street Muse, which was a concept that was included in the original redevelopment plan, which was to provide a sort of an alley um, in a north-south orientation through uh, several of the blocks in between the avenues. And that concept was uh, eliminated as part of the 2018 amendment to the waterfront redevelopment plan. I think actually the design of this project still sort of um, upholds that principle in some ways just by providing you know, the separation between the townhome and the multifamily building roughly where that muse uh, concept would have been located. Um, but it is not required to be a public right of way in any way at this point. Um, because the muse have been um, eliminated to, from the plan. Um, also, there was um, just a question about density, and um, some of you may recall that the, the redevelopment plan does contain a table that has an illustrative depiction of how units could be allocated to the various blocks within the waterfront, and the anticipated density for block 4001 was 200 units, and I think as Ms. Smith already pointed out um, during the course of this application, the subsequent development agreement actually addressed this issue by um, clarifying that the city would agree to allocate an additional 26 units of density from block 3903 lot one to block 4001. Um, and block 3903 was previously developed with far less than the maximum permitted density. Um, uh. Mr. Hughes, if you would then turn to the waivers that have been requested as part of this application. Sure. Um, so I have in my list five waivers from the architectural design guidelines of the redevelopment plan. And I think all of these have already been addressed in some way by either the architect or the engineer, but I'll just try to tie these together and also um, address the standard here, which is under the municipal land use law subsection 51 the board can grant exceptions from uh, the guidelines here as may be reasonable and within the general purpose and intent of the redevelopment plan if the literal enforcement of, of those provisions um, are impracticable. So the first is, um, and this is on page 61 of the redevelopment plan, that building walls shall show no more than two materials in addition to the basement or undercroft and that material shall change only along a, a horizontal line with the heavier material below the lighter. And uh, Mr. Simon, our architect, did provide extensive testimony on the use of materials here and the way he used materials and sort of varying um, both the materials, the colors, um, and in some cases changing along a vertical line to kind of reduce the overall massing of the building. And I think. The intent of that guideline is to really prevent, you know, sort of a, a busy, over-designed building where there's, you know, too many materials and it's just not coming together cohesively. I don't think that's the case here. 
you know, this is a substantial multifamily building and the use of materials here is strategic in terms of trying to break down the overall bulk of the building. And I think that's been done in an appropriate way. Um, the second is on page 62, the door shall be painted wood or composite wood. And of course, in this project, there are doors that will be aluminum or metal. Um, and I do know that Mr. Simon explained that um, certainly in the case of um, egress doors, I mean, there's a number of fire code related requirements that would, I don't want to say prohibit, but makes the use of wood doors impracticable. And um, for a number of reasons, um, alternate materials are proposed in this particular project, but it really ties into the overall aesthetic of the building. And then there's two related to the design of the window. So on page 62, window shall have a minimum four inch post and also, and this is on page 64, that a majority of the windows shall be rectangular within a height to width ratio between one to 1.6 and one to three. Um, our window ratios will be approximately one to 0.46 for singles, one to 0.92 for double hung, and one to 1.38 uh, for the triples. And Basically, and this is something that Mr. Simon explained, but the windows here, um, and certainly my opinion, in terms of the overall fenestration, is very appropriate for a multifamily building of this size. And it's actually results in more glazing or larger windows that's actually required, which just provides more daylight into the units, um, which could be a, a benefit from a sustainability uh, perspective. Um, but again, it's really just customary and integral to the overall design um, of this building. And then finally, on page 66, there's a requirement that facade colors shall be selected from a single quadrant of the color wheel. And uh, the designated quadrant shall be the lighter saturations of the yellow to red quadrant. And the facade colors here, of course, um, are shades of gray with, with blue accents, essentially. Uh, but this color palette, um, first of all, it's certainly not incompatible with the context, both in terms of recently developed projects like Vive, 1101 Ocean, um, even the rehabilitation of Asbury Lanes. Uh, there's also a number of other existing older buildings you know, within the waterfront and adjacent areas um, that do reference these materials and this color palette. So in my opinion, the proposed colors here are certainly not incompatible with the waterfront and wouldn't undermine uh, the intent of the redevelopment plan. Um, and then finally, I know, and this is something that Mr. Delaney addressed, but just there was this question about the infrastructure improvements, specifically the spacing for the lights and the trees. And I guess from my perspective, I agree with um, the legal opinion from Mr. Serpico. I mean, from a planning standpoint, um, certainly, it's always been the case that the infrastructure improvements are really governed by the infrastructure component report and approved by the city and the city engineer. Um, to the extent, extent there are, you know, slight modifications or deviations needed from the, the standards that are set forth in the plan, um, that's always been just addressed in terms of um, working with the city and the engineer at the time of the approval of those infrastructure plans. And having said that, I don't think that the deviations here are substantial and don't result in, certainly don't result in less trees or less lights. Um, so with that, I think that will conclude. Yeah. Is it your opinion that the applicant has met the standards for the board to grant the relief that has been requested? Yes. That's all I have for Mr. Hughes. Anyone from the uh, board have any questions for Mr. Hughes? Yes. I do. Mr. Hughes, uh, you just testified that the, uh, the the chart on page 77, I think it was, uh, says that uh, uh, 200 units are uh, contemplated on this site and that you're asking for 226, correct? I think it's the page number may be wrong. Well, there's 226 units in this project. Um, I believe you're correct that the, the current or the table on page 73, the illustrative table shows 200 for this block. Okay. And there are 23 existing, correct? Uh, 
units existing on the block. I don't know that exact number. Okay, well. Uh, there are some existing, correct? Uh, there are some existing. I don't know the status of those units. There are existing buildings on the block. And there is some vacant space that's not contemplated uh, for redevelopment as of right now, correct? Um, when you mean Lots 16 and 17? There are properties within this block that are not part of this current application, yes. Correct. Um, so, uh, we, if you take my number of 23 as being correct, uh, we already have, if this is approved, you have uh, 249 units. Mr. Henry, if I may, this issue was specifically dealt with by the city council who transferred the density to this, to uh, this block. Um, do you know where, where that's? Where, yes, where so that is, it's uh, section 4.11 of the subsequent development agreement. And so in that agreement, the city council acknowledged that it was transferring sufficient density to this lot from that, that's, to accommodate. That wasn't my question. Okay. My question was taking my numbers you have 249 units, uh, correct? You have two, you have if there's 23 plus this project, and yes. And then you have, you have an additional two vacant lots. Okay. And if, when those are developed, they're gonna have some more units, correct? Uh, well, that would be up for city but, council approval. Uh, but you're, you're a planner, I'm asking you as a planner. Is that a reasonable assumption to make? Well, I, there has to be some reasonable yeah, development potential for those properties. My position is the table in the waterfront redevelopment plan is illustrative. It's always been viewed that way. Um, frankly, I don't know why, you know, the density needs to be transferred in the first place. That's just my opinion. So certainly there's nothing that would prevent the further redevelopment of those properties in the future as far as I'm concerned. So that instead of 226 units, we're talking substantially more than that, correct? Potentially. So, just the, the process would be if, if someone were to come forward with those lots, they would have to fill out a subsequent development application, and that would go to the city council, and there would be a subsequent development agreement. And so, at that time, the city council would consider that additional density, however it might be. I mean, we're only speculating today how many more units could be on those other properties. Well, my question is it's not really 226 units that you're talking about here. If this is approved, you're talking about 249 plus whatever can be built on lots 16 and 17, correct? Well, the subject of this application is the 226 units to the extent there's additional units that currently exist on the block, but that haven't been redeveloped. But they haven't been taken into account yet either, have they? They would be as part of any future redevelopment activity within the block. As Ms. Smith said, they would have to go through the process just like any other applicant of being designated a redeveloper and negotiating an agreement with city council. But this is the planning board that you're coming before. And I'm trying to uh, get you to acknowledge that this application doesn't really consider the west end of this uh, block, the existing uh, dwelling units on that, plus lots 16 and 17, correct? Yeah, I mean, this application is for a portion of the block. There's no requirement in the plan that you have to develop or contemplate every single unit or every single piece of property within a single tax well, block within the city. As a planner, wouldn't you uh, think that that would be necessary to consider when you're developing a plan for the block? No, obviously we, we understand the context and okay. the adjacent land uses, but the redeveloper, the subsequent redeveloper is certainly permitted to pursue any form of redevelopment as long as it complies with the redevelopment plan and the redevelopment agreement. Okay, and uh, in connection with the other, some of the other uh, requirements of the redevelopment uh, plan, for instance, uh, as I recall, the plan that says that the uh, heights of the structures on the uh, 3rd and 4th Avenue sides uh, should be higher so that there's a view corridor down the center of the 
uh, structure being considered? Yeah, that, that whole concept is definitely um, advanced by this project. We have okay. a mid-block view corridor of four stories and, and a maximum height of six stories along Kingsley Avenue, whereas the original redevelopment plan contemplated eight stories. So this specific mass, if you will, or zoning envelope <clears throat> in terms of building height was permitted by city council as an amendment to the redevelopment plan back, back in 2019. And what does that view corridor uh, show a person who is looking from the west uh, down that corridor? Well, I don't know that the view corridor was ever intended for someone at the street level right next to the building to be able to get a glimpse of the ocean. It was really just to provide an opening down the middle in an east-west corridor down the middle of these blocks to promote more light, more air. Certainly, if you're higher up in an adjacent building, perhaps you get a view of the water, but it was never intended to be a view corridor for a pedestrian looking towards the ocean front. Uh, I, I would agree with that, but isn't it for the benefit of the uh, people of the town uh, homes on the west side of this development? And as you look down that view corridor, what do you see? I'm not sure I understand that. Don't you question. see? Doesn't this view corridor front right on uh, ocean uh, complex? Um, I'm not sure I understand the question. Okay. Seems to me that if you look down the view corridor from west to east, you look right smack at the uh, ocean front uh, building. You have a, uh, a building right in front of you that you're funneling everything. This would be, in my opinion, be the one location where you might want to put the taller structures in the center and your uh, lower buildings on the north and south sides. But you're the planner. I'm not the... Okay. I think that's all I... Thank you for your comment, yeah. Anyone else? Could you um, indicate, I remember the 2019 amendment also coming before the planning board and contemplating this block. Could you indicate in plan view where the transition uh, occurs as part of the development control plan? Yes. Yeah, that's fine. Um, the transition it actually roughly occurs where the, the driveways serving phase B and phase C are located. That's, that's about where the transition occurs between six stories and four stories. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty consistent with the location of what was you know, previously considered the, the Wesley Street Muse or Web Street Muse. I can't remember the formal title of it. So yeah, I think the driveway is probably the best Okay, and Marker. does it then go down to three stories? It goes down to four stories, and then along Berg Street transitions to three stories. Okay. But this is all block 400? Yes. All right, so 4001 includes the, this parcel. It does. Okay. And then when does the transition from six to four stories happen? Oh, the six to four is basically at those driveway, that the driveway serving. Oh, sorry, I meant BNC. within the mixed use building. Sorry, the six stories and then four stories in the center. Oh, um, yeah, I mean, that's basically down the center of the block the four-story view corridor. Right here where the green roofs are, is that the area that's four stories? Right? Yes. And then the white is the six stories. Yeah, and there's, you know, if you look at the development control plan and the redevelopment plan, there's, you know, there's hash marks that sort of like roughly delineate where these transitions occur. And there's even language, um, you know, that, that basically says that the planning board has some you know, it says the planning board shall interpret the development control plan to determine the precise location where buildings shall change height to conform to the plan. So I think it's acknowledging that they're not, you know, precise delineations in terms of where those transitions occur, but, 
you know, the general concept of having that mid block view corridor and then having the transition from six to four, um, you know, should be employed in each of these projects. But I actually think where these transitions occur are pretty spot on in terms of where the, where the sort of hash marks are in the, the redevelopment plan. Are you okay, Alexis? Oh yeah, sorry. It's okay. I <laughs> so we just want to make sure. Anybody else have any uh, any questions from the board for Mr. Hughes? Or do our professionals have any questions for Mr. Hughes? No, no questions. No questions. Doug, no. you're okay. Jack. Okay. Um, it's time to open up to the public to see if they have any questions from Mr. Hughes based on his testimony. Anyone? Okay. Okay. Um, let's move forward. Uh, the next, uh, the next portion here is uh, opening up uh, for public comment for this application. Unless Miss Smith has anything else. No, I'll we'll reserve till after the public comment. Okay. All right. Let's. Uh, can I get a motion to open for public comment? So moved. Okay. Anyone? For public comment? We need a second. Oh, we don't have a second? No, I just have Eric as a, as a motion. Rick Lambert as a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Any opposed? Oh, public comment open. All right, public comment is open. No one? Motion to close public comment? Moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, let's have, uh, now let's open it up to the board for any comment that they would like to provide or any, anything that they'd like to say before we get into any conditions or this could be part of our condition discussion. Sure. Uh, this is Mike Manzo. I just wanted to make a, a comment about the bike storage because there was a question by the public that was brought up that would, uh, made me think a little bit. So I think maybe there should be a condition that um, the rolling garage door allows some kind of pedestrian, um, whether it's a push button exit or key something. Key something that it's fobs. maybe the, perhaps it, uh, perhaps there could be another exit door near that. The location of the bike storage facility is a little a little bit uh, back in the back of the basement and yeah. so yeah obviously it'll take a little looking into to figure exactly how but we can as a condition represent that there will be a method for a pedestrian with a bike to exit with that bike out cool. onto the street awesome thank you Got it. Thank you. Any uh, anyone else have any conditions that they would? Uh, actually, I'd like the clarification on 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 conditions. Sure. Okay. Because I'm a little confused myself. Uh, well, maybe I can jump I'm, in. And I'd be happy. For, I'd be happy for okay. you to, to tell us <laughs> okay. what right, conditions we, we might want to mention. We that have how does that work? Seven to ten usual. That right. Kind of boilerplate to tie everything in conditions. Testimony at all by all witnesses, sub uh, approval by uh, if there's an outside agency that alters our approval, uh, got to come back, uh, just with carte blanche, and then the lease agreement, we're going to get that. Um, all the testimony from both meetings of the witnesses, including tonight, and I will enunciate a lot of the things that Jennifer went through with uh, both the engineer and planner, there was all of those items, they'll, they'll be specifically mentioned. And I'll work that out, those details out with both Stan uh, and Doug. Uh, P&M supplemental conditions in, uh, in today's notes from the supplemental report. Insight supplemental conditions that were agreed to in those reports. 
Uh, any other additional conditions that we have that I have already written down in there? The phasing plan, I'll put that in in more detail, certainly, uh, based on the testimony from this evening. Uh, I'll develop something regarding the T&M Engineering Agency as the arm of the redevelopment agency to improve the infrastructure components, landscaping, and the like. I'll mention the recess inapplicability due to our standard plan uh, requirements plus the CAFTA permit and the exceptions permitted by RESIS. Uh, garage door system of some type of method for the, for the residents when they leave and enter with a bicycle that they have some means of ingress and egress separately that will be addressed. And I don't, I don't other than what I find in the notes, that's what I have so far. Okay, so, so, uh, so things that we mentioned like the, the no trespassing signs, which we mentioned today okay. that that would be in there. Signage. Signage. Okay. I know that last time when we were here, we mentioned that um, uh, about the trash and how it's going to be wheeled out. You'd mentioned that there that should be a condition. Well, or is that is if that was mentioned in, here, so we're okay. Yeah, trash is done in compactors, correct? That's what right. You, that that we testified yeah. to it today. Yes. yes. So that's, we don't have to include that. No. Okay. It's part of the testimony that's. Applicant has agreed. That goes into the record. Right, and the uh, other thing was the the uh, the uh, pedestrian indication that the the, the 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 doors are going up. Yes, you know some sort uh, of a flashing. So that would be something. like I'll consider that a pedestrian safety warning yes. system. Yes. Yeah. And I know that we also mentioned as an option for the charging stations to be in the townhomes as an option. So that's something that was not in any of the documentation. Uh, I thought that was in the comments from T N M that was. Over, I thought it had originally been proposed. It's charging well, stations, but I'll, I'll well, put it in, no problem. No problem. So, so charging just, stations within the townhomes, it's town an option. Just, just to clarify on that, whose option is that? The, I, I'm assuming the purchaser of the townhome? Oh, it's so. not a purchaser, it's a rental. Oh, the townhomes are rental. Oh, town so then okay. it's not an option. Everything's rental. But we can make... They'll all be pre-wired. That's right. what I'm being told. Okay. So then it's not an option. They're actually pre-wired. Just they want to use it. They can. They It'll, be, implement. It'll be pre-wired. Yeah. So okay. All right. And then everything else was mentioned in the uh, in, yeah. the, in the documents that we received. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, does anybody else have anything else that they would like to Alexis, add that we did not? That you from what we just had that little discussion. No. Okay. That's Thank right. you. Are we okay? Okay. All right, then uh, can I get a motion to approve based on the conditions that- uh, Oh, I know. Is the board satisfied collectively that the applicant has met the standards for the design exceptions, those four or five, the colors and all that? And you, you accept the testimony of the, uh, mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. planner? Yep. Okay. I do. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. Okay. All right. Can I get a motion to approve based on the conditions that were mentioned? I will make a motion to approve. Eric, was that you? I could can't read your lips. Yes. Hidden behind a mask. <laughs> yes. And Rick is second. I have a motion by Eric Gallopo and a second by Rick Lambert. Mayor Zanamar. Yes. Councilwoman Yvonne Clayton. Yes. Michael Manzella. Yes. Jim Henry. No. Jennifer Souter. Yes. Alexis Taylor. Yes. Eric Gallopo. Yes. Rick Lambert? Yes. And Barbara Krizak? Yes. Application approved. Thank you very much, everyone. Right. We appreciate your time on this one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and we also appreciate the uh, how you've been able to condense it and move us through this. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, can I get a motion to adjourn? Second. Second. All right. Henry and Mr. Henry and Michael Mandela, all in yes. favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.